Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to our followers and friends of Melia Hotels International in Fitur. We are so happy, so eager after two such difficult years. Now, an edition of Fitur, we're going to be starting with a review and an interview to the author of the biographic book, My Life of Gabriel Escarré our founder, the founder of Melia Hotels International, and one of the main protagonisms, protagonists of the stories of tourism. We have here Isabel Duran. She is a prestigious journalist and communicator. Good afternoon. Hello, Maria. Thank you for coming. And indeed, we really want to find out about this very interesting process of writing the biography of Gabriel Escarrer. Julia. This is a biography that so many people have been expecting, all people that are interested in tourism in Spain. And a question we have as a writer, can you tell us why the biography now? Well, first of all, great news that we are here in Fitur, the, the fair has taken place within these very difficult circumstances and a great piece of news that we have this book. Why? Because the sector of tourism in Spain, the figure of Gabriel Escarrer is a figure in its own right, and he has become a person that has been a brand for Spain and his work. Any person interested in knowing about tourism in Spain has to know the story of Gabriel Escarrer. And well, time will say, but right now we can state that it is essential. Uh, he is Spain as a brand and as the Spanish tourism sector because of the whole transformation process that he worked on making a small company become an enormous one, even more valuable now because he, Gabriel Escarrer, has always wanted to keep a low profile in society, among the media, so his life is passionately interesting, but however discreet, a life away from the media and truly to find out about this and very interesting adventure, undoubtedly. Well, for you all to know precisely, I would like to tell our followers that we have a competition right now in our LinkedIn profile of Melia Hotels International. We have a draw for 10 books, 10 copies of this magnificent biography. So do participate and you know, you can win a copy of the book. Well, listen, we are talking of someone who has lived and has been the protagonist of nearly seven decades of tourism in Spain. Does this mean that his story is parallel to the development of tourism in Spain? Absolutely, totally and absolutely. If we go back to the very beginning when he started with his small rented hotel in 1956, no less, this book is, uh, well, really the story of Spanish tourism. And of course, it runs in parallel with the very entertaining story of his life. It's a novel and he is a fundamental figure in Spanish tourism. He made the Balear islands become important. He went on to the Iberian Peninsula and then to the Canary Islands. He went on to international expansion and it's really something memorable. And he later on took his group at the, to the highest international standards. So full of anecdotes, right? The book? Well, that is the good bit, yes. And well, he clarified the day that we met and you were there, I remember, and many other days that we have met during these years, he said he did not want to be dogmatic, he wanted to be entertaining, and very simply, he wanted people to get to know the story of tourism and the story of his own life, a story that he had intentionally never shared before. So I think it is a book, well, I can say mission accomplished, and my congratulations, because you have also worked a lot, Maria. We have really made it possible to fill the book with anecdotes of a fascinating life. They had to be written, they really did. 
And it's a story of episodes um, in life, different chapters meeting kings and queens, different people working in that large Melia family. And he tells us about it all. It is reflected in his biography. There is a whole life of effort, of work, which is not just by chance. It's not serendipity. It is well worked for success that I think could be a case model for administration, business administration schools. You were saying as well, yes, it's not by chance. Of course, I know. And as I have met the character, I know. But along these months, you have been meeting and hearing the story. And of course, through the pandemic, I guess the two of you had to get together in a special manner. How would the person writing about his life define Gabriel Escarré? Well, it's difficult to condensate such an intense, fruitful, passionately interesting life. In a few words, it's very difficult. But I would say he is a hard working man. He is, uh, well, he never tires. He's undeniably never tires. He is a visionary. And he has known how to lead a small group of people because at the beginning it was he himself. And then he started with a small group that he has maintained next to him throughout the years. And he has always had the vision of knowing where he wanted to have first his hotel group. And then he has kept on growing, not only national expansion, but also international. So I would define him as an entrepreneurial visionary but nobody has given anything to him. He has won everything through sheer hard effort. He's an example for young generations. If he were a United States man, all the world would know him, but he's not. And he is a very humble person, very discreet. And when people get to know what his life has been, well, I really can say that people will be very surprised I mean, that incredible entrepreneurial capability and that incredible vision that he has is easy to say now, but he had that right from the beginning in those difficult years in Spain after Franco or even with Franco, international growth, the future, digitation as well. He has been a pioneer in so many things that when you read the book, I can assure people will be very surprised. Impressive, yes. He lived at times of opportunity, but he knew how to take advantage, didn't he? And of course, it means a reference for so many. Yes, indeed, because it's not easy to have a vision like his. It's very difficult, you know, I mean, then in the 90s, in the 20th century, when Google didn't even exist. I mean, listen, yes, of course, tourism companies are in the internet, but how did anyone get this idea? He actually got a website of Melia in internet when the Google as a search engine did not exist. And this tells us that he was and is a visionary. He had a great team. He has really worked and worked. And he has always been day in and day out analyzing how many rooms are full in each one of his hotels. And then he finally went on to digitize everything. He was a pioneer both in Spain and Europe. And that vision really deserves the people become interested. People have to read about it. They have to get to the detail because yes, he's a pioneer, but listen, it wasn't easy then. It wasn't easy. Indeed, he opened paths. Isabel, seven decades contained in nearly 300 pages. I guess there are three or four main defining moments in his life. Could you identify those important moments? Yes, I think that the lifespan of Gabriel Escarrer, which is the same as the Melia group, has, well, that moment in which he bought his first hotel. Do I have time to tell you about the anecdote? He was working in the Wagenslit agency, and he decided to uh, insert a small ad in the newspaper saying, I will rent a hotel. And there was a lady who answered, she replied to that ad in the newspaper, 
And Gabriel then, who was 21 in 1956, he went to see the lady. He was young, handsome, tall, incredible. When the lady saw him, she nearly fainted. She said, how am I going to rent a hotel to this young man? He convinced the lady because he's so convincing when he talks. He was then too. And he started, well, renting that first hotel, then another and another and another. Then he started to build his first hotels. We're talking of the 50s, the 60s and the 70s, the first stage. Then finally democracy came to Spain. Spain changed politically and he had then the vision of diversifying of leaving the Balearic Islands and he changed. He went on to become the Sol group. He went on to the Iberian Peninsula, to more islands. And from there, he decided to expand internationally. Something that no one could think then would be logical because he decided to open a hotel in Bali. 14,000 kilometers away from the headquarters in Mallorca, when people didn't even know where Bali was. There were no tourist routes then. And so there he was a pioneer. And then the international expansion began. And at the same time, there is an important stage in which he kept buying hotels, yeah, the Tassa group, other groups, and so Melia as a brand as well, he bought that. He had incredible gestures with who had been the founder of the Melia group. He had the vision of keeping the brand and improving on it. So this expansion part is also important. And then there are two, two successes I have to mention. One, when he went on to quote in the stock exchange, this also was a pioneering step forward. First, he brought along the buffet that we all use for breakfast and, or for lunch. He was the first to introduce it in Spain. His was the first hotel company in Spain to be quoted on the stock exchange and the success was immediate. And then two more successes. Uh, his became the most sustainable hotel company in the world. And also that incredible digitation process he started. Yes, truly interesting. I believe that all these innovations, this pioneering character, this making Melia Hotels International different has to do with the family nature of his company. However much it might be since 1996 quoting in the stock exchange, it is a family company. How does that work? A family company in such a huge company as it is. Well, precisely this family nature makes the Melia group especially attractive and interesting because they maintain a set of values that in, of course, uh, mean standards for the stock exchange references. And for him, there are more values, not only stock exchange, it's respect, sustainability. You know, it's not the typical stock exchange values only, no, only, no, it is a set of values that work in a family, and this is what makes him so different. I met him on the day in which uh, trade unions, all of them, were organizing a homage for him. That is not typical at all, to have trade unions, that is to have the workers organizing a, a, a special party to pay homage to the founder and president of a company. And I can tell you, I have experience. So this is because he's got these values that he has developed during nearly 70 years of work. And that has always been over and above purely company or stock exchange values. So this is what defines him. Together with the, the fact that he has been interested in setting up an independent um, counselor network at the same time as he links the family. And it is a very personal way of doing things. Well, you mentioned, yes, very personal, a certain heritage. I believe 
the, the beginning of the book is so interesting because you tell us about the beginnings of his life and you explain all those innovations, all the pioneering work, expansion work. But I think that the end of the book, of his biography, is very important. Why? Well, because it's like, uh, you know, just the, the crown of everything. It's the epilogue written by himself. And it's a final part of the book in which he talks about four essential things. The fact of his wanting to leave a heritage, not only for his family, but for society. He says he confesses that he is a frustrated architect. And he says, for people interested in knowing about hotels, he mentions we have Conrad Hilton with an incredible biography. But this one is truly fascinating because Gabriel Escarré analyzes all those years of profession with the vision of a frustrated architect, which is how he defines himself. And he has a decalogue of what the, the main traits should be of a successful hotel. Any person interested in being in the world of hotels has to read the book, definitely. He talks as well in the book, in, in that final part that he has written, about the heritage he wants to leave behind. And he mentions his interest in collaborating and in contributing value to the company, but not only to the company, but to society, to the human capital of the company. And he really places great value on his workers. And he is happy that he never, ever stopped paying the payroll to his workers, always, although sometimes were very complicated, very difficult, but he never stopped paying the salary of his hotel workers. There is a third aspect, his commitment towards the environment. This has to be highlighted. He believes in sustainable companies. And finally, the fourth thing I would like to mention, he writes a sentence I love, which is, my family is my greatest work meaning that he has really built something huge with great care, great love, great delicacy, because uh, this company of his is a family that transcends not only the stock exchange or his heritage, but it, it transcends as well in that his family, that is his wife, his offspring and his grandchildren have the values of the company very clear to know how to operate in the future as well. And this is a good example of family companies in Spain. Many don't really work. And when they go on to the next generation, they don't really work because they, they are not able to survive. And here he has done it really very carefully. So clearly it's another case for success to analyze. Yes, indeed, a visionary, an exceptional person. And beyond the person, well, I would like to tell our followers, do read the book, not only because it's good to get to know him and to get to know the Melia Hotels International Company, but really because I think this can be a necessary handbook for those people who are thinking about devoting their time to this lovely world of tourism. So. Go ahead. The books are available in platforms online, in English and Spanish, in bookshops. And as I say, you can participate in the LinkedIn competition in the Melia group. The 10 first books will be given as a present. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and an honor to have such a prestigious writer as yourself writing the book. I personally have to say I have loved it. As you know, it's great reading and have a very good year, a great FITUR fair, and we now officially open the social networks or online set. Good afternoon. Thank you.